Actually, today, speaking of triggering, um, when Michael was speaking today, I remembered something, uh, Brian, something so weird. I think Alex Collier was in the same organization that I've told you about. Who's Alex Collier? So I'm going to get in touch with Alex. Who's that? I had a memory of Alex, of, of, of knowing him in that order. So I'm going to write to him and I'm going to ask him if he was in it. Here you want to tell the audience who Alex is? Oh, Alex I have, Collier. To, I have Alex to let Collier. my dog out. I'll be right back. Alex Collier is the guy who believes he's in contact with Andromedans. Yes. Yeah. And then followed by that other recent guy, um, Corey Good. Right. But Cor I don't think Corey's people are Andromedans. Yeah. Well, he claimed something very similar earlier, right? Corey Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to write to him and I'm going to see if he was in the same organization because there were a lot of people in it and, um, you know, it just kind of disappeared. Huh. And and I, I've never seen any members on any social media or anything except maybe, maybe Alex. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't heard, I haven't uh, seen Alex for years and years and years since years ago. Um, and so and did, you, did you know him personally when we could still get together with people? Uh, not Alex Collier personally. I think I saw him in Seattle years ago. Okay. But, okay. You heard him speak. Yeah. But I've, um, and I actually got a bunch of stuff from him similar to Michael Horn about plea, plea RNs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just asking on behalf of the audience, of course, who knows nothing about this person. Can you, can you recommend a book or website or who you're talking about? Alex Collier? I have no idea if he has a website or any of that. Yeah, I don't either. He just, um, he, he is in the circuit sometimes, but not really. He's kind of a rebel. He's kind of a UFO rebel in a way, yeah. I think. I know? don't know if he's even into it anymore, actually. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, but he did, he's not, he's not like, a, doesn't do the circuit or anything. Mm -hmm. He never did do that, that yeah. kind of stuff, like Corey Good. Just well, actually, what, what's his claim to fame? You said the Andromeda connection, is that his claim to fame? The, the Andromeda <laughs> connection just triggered something in me because the group I was in, was from the, the communication was from the Andromedans. Yeah. You mean the group in the early 70s on yes, Fraser Street? Yeah. Movie? Yeah. Wow. That's the in one Vancouver, that was, Fraser Street. 1970s. The one that was UFO on the outside and really dark on the inside. What, what do you want to tell the audience the name of the group? No. No. I'll, I'll just okay. uh, get okay. in touch with Alex first. Yeah. Sure, sure. Sounds good. Uh, what do you guys think about the whole cosmic disclosure, Corey Good, and all that stuff? The Sphere Being Alliance and the 20 and Back program. and I've listened to Corey Good a lot, and I've noticed a lot of there's a lot of errors in his speeches. So I'll basically leave it at that. But um, like when he talked about, um, what's his name? Um, like that guy who went down to the South Pole. Um, with Operation High Jump and all that. Bird. Admiral Bird. Uh, Admiral Bird. Bird. Admiral Bird. He actually changed the, I noticed he changed that story a lot and some others he changed a lot too. So I don't really give him as much cre credence as I guess other people would, but, but that's just me. Yeah, uh, I just, I've had it, the science come to me a few times how we, we sort of change our past or our memories that we, they, they become askewed as our perception and perspective changes and shifts. And that's kind of how we can release trauma and whatnot. So if we can do it in that regard, who's to say how we do it to positive instances and stuff? Do we keep it accurate or does yeah. that shift with our perspective? And so, I mean, who knows? <laughs> and, and the whole timeline shifting thing, um, I always believed it was collective focus and that's why the awakening was important. So collectively we can shift into a different timeline where there are no pedos and weirdos. Um, but individually, because everything is microcosm of the macrocosm, it will happen for us individually as well. We can shift in the frequency or the broadband of that um, prominent frequency that we all exist on here in this realm. So 
he may have started out that way and it may have changed or maybe if he was part of the 20 and back because supposedly it screws people up. Um, the first time that he talked about it, uh, I was a prodigious child. And then between second and third grade, I became autistic. And I think it had everything to do with the inoculation that I received. And when I was under hypnosis, I, my whatever came through and said that that was planned to shut me off because I was shining too bright and I was not supposed to, I was supposed to be inconspicuous, not conspicuous. So it is possible that he did that. Um, and then he lost his way. Um, but when I first started watching it several years ago, it resonated with me. In the last two years, I can't even hear it for five minutes. And I wondered if they, you know, are they clones and they're just spreading disinformation now that have little glimpses of what truly factually happened to them? Like who, who knows? Even Emma, Smith, Emory thought. Smith. Emory Smith. I've just given a lot of thought to Corey Good. I, I thought he was um, just hired by Guy TV as an actor and I didn't really believe it, but I'm not 100% certain. But, but I think it's disinfo, but certainly within disinfo, you're going to get a lot of truth mixed. Mm -hmm. So um, the actual message, there might be some truth, of course, in there. Yeah, of course, it's a message. But I, I, I'm not certain. I'm just not certain. Yeah. I, I, like I said, it was great in the beginning. In the last couple of years, it just, it was like I was getting ear raped. Like the frequency, everything about it was just like incorrect well do, do you give me straight like do you think he's a phony like what do you what, what do you mean last no year? i i think they they originally came through with some something factual and they got silenced and have been replaced with this information you're talking about Corey good that whole old crew david wilcox <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I think they started out very authentic and they were replaced or whatever the hell happens. They were, they were silenced and it went from facts and to disinformation. So what, what you're feeling like now you're saying is still disinformation, but they were honest before. Can you elaborate on that? That's just how I felt like um, energetically speaking when I was first um opened to this knowledge or information of them it it there was many things that resonated completely like my frequency was like yes and even my knees buckled uh, when he was talking about the 20 and back program because it made a hundred percent sense of explaining who I was and how I literally shifted over a summer and changed and I started peeing the bed. I went from being prodigious to being an idiot savant that one day would test in the 80s that couldn't tie my shoes supposedly to back in the 140s. And he said that people who went could rarely go more than once without it breaking their mental faculties. And so maybe his mental faculties got broken. And I don't know, I have zero memory of that happening to me, it just would explain a whole lot about the knowledge that I've had for so long, if it were true. You mean you're implying that your knowledge is you, you've lived for 20 years of your life somewhere and then you came back and you got knowledge? I have no recollection of that whatsoever, but all the, the symptomatic stuff surrounding the knowledge, the memory and the information that I have could be explained that way. I'm not saying it happened. I'm just saying it is very, it could totally be explained as that happening, but I have no recollection of that happening. I think it could be explained as just a download or channeling as well. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, totally. Um, when I was little, I was writing poetry that I was not from this earth, <laughs> that I came here to help. Like, I was way more fixated on what was going on in here and in my closet <laughs> than I was dolls and Barbies and friends, okay. even though I had some and I did play and all that, you know, I just, I couldn't wait to get back to my closet and see what was next. I felt like that was my mission. Like that was, oh. that was just as important as eating. But I wonder if that has anything to do specifically 20 back, like Corey's good claim is he went to the moon and he's been to Mars and other Mario <laughs> stuff for 20 years and he said um, his body has regressed 20 years plus they sent him back 20 years in time so he's only gone like 15 minutes but he said most people in 20 and back um 
their memories are suppressed. They don't remember, but for some reason he could remember. Um, Correct. So that's, but he, he claims that when they lived in the moon, they were told that the earth was destroyed. Um, but if the earth was destroyed, can't you look out the window? I mean, can't you see some that? That's a bit odd. Like he's never in 20 years on the surface moon uh, to take a look. Uh, couldn't he give us the president of the United States 20 years in a row if he... Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, how, how did his information go from being and feeling, I'm trusting the feeling, um, authentic to, like we have said, maybe sprinkles of truth and a whole lot of disinformation? Yeah, I'm just guessing maybe there's sprinkles of truth and he was hired by Gaia TV and all mainstream media is controlled basically by the globalists. So the globalists hire him and, that, and they're trying to relieve, relieve, release some truth, but they want to confuse and misinform the public. So they do it through Gaia TV, through Corey Good. That's just a theory that would seems reasonable off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, I, I think that, you know, I, I, I know you're on BitChute, but I won't watch it because I feel very strongly about several speakers on there that energetically, it's like an ice pick in the ear. I'm like, they're, they are <laughs> pretending to I be <laughs> of this side, but they sure. are spreading disinformation. Well, Portland's and, quite liberal, right? Portland's one of the most liberal states. Are you liberal? <laughs> oh yeah, we're, no, I'm, I'm a utopian socialist. <laughs> I think we should all care for each other. Okay, sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I would, I mean, I'm just I'm saying that jokingly. I don't identify as anything at all. I don't identify as a new age or a, a religion or a gender. I mean, it's probably as deep as I'll identify. I identify as a woman, and I've never included that in a conversation. And when people ask me what I identify as, I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> that's more well, personal than you're a cisgender woman i'm a cisgender male because i identify in the sex that i was born into so i'm cisgendered male you see i just like who gives a crap i don't care <laughs> I, I think that is all a big weird distraction of separatism that we are needing to walk away from that is part of that fork in the road there is new information for us to evolve and there is new information for us to separate and die off it just depends on which side you choose and it shouldn't even be a side but because we're trying to split off from this ran out dense reality that's what it's come down to as i said earlier my book that I have been working on forever, The Nine Truths, One Possible Alternative. This that is happening and playing out right now is my possible alternative to shift us back on the track to evolve and reunite with our galactic family. So you're, you're publishing a book? Uh, eventually, yeah. I got the IMEI number and uh, and I, I take notes here and there. I just Well, you can do a plug for it now. Do you want to give us a title? Is, is it your the Nine story? Truths. The Nine Truths and One Possible Alternative is the name. Is it about your life story? Kind of. Um, it's uh, the nine cycles of life that, uh, starting with the seeding of the planet, the coexisting experiment, and, um, you know, it'll play out through the chapters until the possible alternative of us returning here to course correct because... We've been spinning our wheels for decades. Well, I'm looking forward to your book. Gee, I, I just got uh, Susie Hansen's book. Je Jeff has a book. It hasn't been published yet. It's actually right right here. Jeff Selber, he's our abductee here. I call him our star abductee here in Vancouver. Very cool. Right on. Yeah, I'd love to talk to him more. We've had a good chat back and forth. But I have to go now. My dog needs to go on his potty walk, and he's... He's letting well, me I know. I think maybe we should wrap up with everyone together. They eh? want to open up your uh, your cameras there, Rolf and Dennis and everybody. Should we say a good goodbye? We did five hours, guys. Good job. Oh, Ian's there. Yeah, I'm still here. So any, yeah, any last here. remarks, everybody? Uh, well, yeah, I, um, I'd just like to, to just chip in there about the Corey Good thing, but I won't go on about it for too long. Well, go I ahead, go on, go on about it. If, if Greer has to go right now, she can go right now, but go on as long yeah. as you want. Ian is no. very special, Greer. He is the wise man of the group. He's oh, come on. Don't blame. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but yeah, I, I interviewed uh, uh, Corey Good with Linda in 2016. 
And although he told quite a convincing story, I'm uh, in the studies that I've had since then, I've become more sceptical of him, particularly in, in his actions, let's say, such as uh, trying to claim a copyright on the name Secret Space Program and his fallouts with other researchers. It's, it's kind of like uh, left a bad mark, really, on everything. However, I do have to say that after the interview with Corey, the night afterwards, I was, uh, I think it was the night afterwards, or two nights afterwards, I had the most vivid dreams of myself being on Mars. Uh, and I have to say, they were probably the most vivid dreams I've ever had. So I don't know what happened there, or if some memories were triggered or whatever. But the you think it's back... just the, the association of, of him and Mars that did it, or is there really something about him that did it? I'm not sure, but uh, but it was. But it's time it was, for this. It was it was yeah. It was a weird moment. It was it was almost as though I was living another life on Mars, and it was so realistic, so sharp, such such high definition, such clarity in that dream. It was uh, it was really really amazing. But have you seen? There's a uh, a YouTube clip now. I think Corey Good's uh, doing a film, which is the Twenty and Back. I think if you put in Twenty and Back trailer, rip, I didn't know. Rip reel. It's yeah, some I really, saw that. Yeah, some really good graphic effects. So it's obviously got a lot of uh, good, good. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, the investment second time, behind it. the second time I looked at it, those effects and those graphics are pieces and that he's pulled from other movies and videos. Yeah, like, I was going to so say. If it's not his own, then he's uh, obviously he's pulled all that from somewhere. But it, it's, a, it, I mean, a rip reel is sort of like a concept thing anyway. But Keep it looks in mind, like he trying... claims he did 20 and back three times. So he's currently 109 years old, his own claim. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm unconvinced. I know, I know we have our own uh, secret space program person here called Julie Phelps. And, uh, and I've spent time with her. She, again, is quite convincing. But I don't think it's so... It's so intense as Corey's, but there, there's there's most likely something to it, like all of this, and it it demands uh, deeper research. I would say. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm I'm glad to be part of it, and I'm glad to to hear Greer opening up, and uh, she sounds like she's got a fascinating story. Greer, we're glad to have you along, and I look forward to hearing more from you as well as time goes by. And Ian, we're really happy um, that Linda Moulton Howe can get any guests from us. She's welcome, you know. I, I read him all She sent me a really nice email back. We're just happy to work with Linda Moulton Howe in any way we can support her because she's been at this for 41 years. She's the grand dam of ufology. She deserves a lot of support. She's 79. She can't do this forever. So I'm glad yeah, you worked well, with Linda. Yeah, and we really appreciate it, Brian. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you all later. Okay. My battery's cutting out, so um, I'm... Uh, yeah, you I'm wouldn't in. hang up on that quickly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> your battery's cutting out. <laughs> no, my battery keeps cutting out, so I've been... Uh, I've been listening anyway, uh, echoing your comments about the... Um, what I said to you about being a high level of, of discussion. My father was in the room at one time. He's 84, and he, he actually said... He overheard some of the conversations. He said, this is really good. This, this is a really good discussion. Uh, these are really good people. What's going on? So he was quite interested to hear the uh, oh. the discussions. Oh, that's an honor. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. this is one of our best. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's good. It's very, it's um, it's thought, thought provoking and mind blowing. So yeah, that's my final <laughs> comments. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night then to anyone else who's on the channel. Uh, it's been a great evening and uh, and I'll be more of a participant next time. Okay. See you soon. See you. Bye for now. <laughs> so Rob, I want to thank you for your comments. I'm always trying to get you to talk my strategy since um, you never booked the time as guest. I'm getting you a bit by bit throughout a series of dozens of videos. So you're in great form today, Rob. Thanks for your camera, camera cal cal calculations and the holograph thing. <laughs> Well, it's true, right? I mean, hologram was invented in 1969, thereabouts. And uh, all it is, it's a different kind of taking a picture, right? If you have a slide, you put it in a projector, you throw it on the wall. Hologram, okay, it's a little bit different. It's like a 3D picture. And uh, then they found out because the, the uh, 
hologram plate accidentally broke. And so they realized, oh, there is a whole image on the broken piece too, because usually you have the image in one glass plate, right? Which on the reflecting hologram, which I made, the total image is on the plate. It has to be a glass plate because the exposure is so bloody long, I mean into minutes, you know? Nothing has to move. The, uh, the item that you're photographing, uh, uh, you can't photograph a flower because it, it will move just ever so slightly. So you have a solid object, you photograph it, you shoot the beam at it via mirrors and all that jazz. And then you, you know, develop the image and then you have an image like the, well, I don't know. Can you see that image? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so that's a, that's a reflecting hologram, right? By reflected light. The hologram these people are talking about that says, that say that the universe is a hologram. Well, they're talking about the projected hologram where you project these laser beam through it or at it, you know, a hologram when you see it, well, you can put your hand through it, just like you can if you project the slide, you put your hand between the beam, you have a shadow of your hand in the picture, right? So the picture really doesn't exist as a solid thing. And so it is with the hologram, you can see it as a three dimensional image, but you can put your hand through it because it's uh, it's just an image right? that is floating there. Okay, but overall, what did you think of Michael Horn's presentation? Like you're the one you're quite fond of Billy well, Meyer. How do you feel now? Well, I well I think it's turning into a religion, which he tried to deny, right? And. Uh, well, I mean, those UFOs, I mean, they look funny as hell. I'm not saying that the UFOs cannot make any shape they feel like doing, right? Because they can change shapes while you're flying. But, but they claim that those uh, photos have been authenticated by Jet Propulsion Library, uh, Bruce uh, yeah, Maccabee and others. What do you think I, of that? I, 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 well, you know, what can I say? I, I don't see the originals. But apparently he had his, well, first of all, the camera, and there are two stories with those models. He said that somebody else's kids made, made the models. His ex-wife said that he made the models himself and uh, because he was mad at them. Well, I don't blame her because he had all these, these women folk always taking up his time. And she wasn't even allowed. She had to stay in the kitchen and they were having their happy UFO meeting in the, in the you know, in the, in the living room type of thing. <laughs> he had groupies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, but uh, yeah, I, well, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, so this friend of mine, this woman that she knows, when she knew my personally quite well. And they said, yeah, we, we saw the UFOs. Well, you know, well, what, what can one say? But, uh, and he has pictures of it, which is strange. And nobody mentioned that, but he actually dropped the camera that Olympus said he, that is mentioned here in this document. And uh, so the focus actually wasn't working. So the focus was close to infinity setting. It wasn't close focus. So he could not mm -hmm. take any close up pictures with that camera, it'd be just impossible, right? And, uh, and the guy down in town where he took the film to, he said, well, that, that's the only camera he had and that he used and uh, he developed a film for him and you know, I'm not sure I understand. If you have a camera set at infinity, it should work even with something close to you, shouldn't it? Uh, well, 
only if you're using f16 or f22 right which means the lens is really it's almost like a pinhole opening on the lens yes then you have what is called depth of field right but uh, no you wouldn't get close uh, well what you call close to photograph a model impossible because normal focus on these cameras only goes down to about three feet, right? And then it goes on to infinity. Hey, you're a camera technician. I have, I have no idea really. I can't really uh, you don't? comment on that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I worked 23 years for Nikon. I ran the service department. So, so Rolf, do you think Billy Meyer is the real deal? He's got like... It's, well... I saw his book when it came out. I saw the Banyan's book, but I think it was either 47 or $75 or something. Big, uh, uh, you know, a coffee table book with all the photographs in it. And I looked at them. Well, of course, they were actually out of focus, but I didn't know at the time that his camera was, the focusing was jammed, right? So they wouldn't be tax sharp. Uh, depending of what he was photographing. The price kind of scared me, and <laughs> so I never did buy the book. Maybe, maybe I should have. Oh, well, I would, would like to have it. Right now, actually, I'm after the movie camera that he used, that is mentioned here, which I never heard of it before. Yeah, he shows the old 1960 camera in the slideshow. Uh, no, the camera. no, this, uh, the, the movie camera was a Super 8 camera. Quite an advanced model. Uh, it cost over a thousand dollars new. It looked like a Hasselblad, which is a blockish kind of camera. Do you know the Hasselblad camera? You know? The Hasselblad was the one used in the fake moon landing. It was impervious to radiation. It didn't get cold or hot. It just it was ordinary Kodak film, according to NASA. But that's another story. <laughs> CBC did a special on that whole moonshot. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm curious. Do you guys think that we actually went to the moon, but we had to fake it, what it looked like because of how much activity we encountered there and we were not allowed to talk about nor were we allowed to return or what do you what's your what's your take there's so I many I, I went down to the kennedy senate space center and did a video right there saying it was a fake moon landing i think the best evidence is a video around the year 2000 it's called what happened on the moon available on youtube is three hours and 40 minutes very thorough I think they faked the moon landing. I think they've been to the moon prior to 1969. And I think they've got bases on the moon with their flying saucers. But there's the public space program with, with even now this week, they have liquid fuel rockets with Elon Musk after 100 years from John Gargan, liquid fuel rockets after 100 years. Um, so I think the, the elites have their own secret space program. But I think Apollo was faked. I'm 95% convinced it was faked. Have you seen the comic book or the Arthur C. Clarke? Um, one was published in 1953 and the other in 1959. And both of them uh, have comic photos or artwork of the face on Mars. But yet we supposedly didn't see the face on Mars until 1976. So I did, I didn't know that, Greer. Thank you. I've never heard this before. Like, right, wow. I have actually have photographs of all that. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I, I was uh, down at the Space Center too and uh, saw the movie from the first rover and I saw the pyramid, clear as anything. And I wanted to take a picture, but then the group moved on. I missed it the first time. Second time I missed it too. And I didn't have, it was on the loop running, you know. So I didn't have enough time. But of course, now we know there is uh, pyramids on, on, on Mars. What do you think, guys? It's, should we wrap up? It's been five and a half hours. It's been a great day. What do you, yeah. Anything else you want to cover? I'm, I'm good. I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to talk with you guys again. I'm glad that I chimed in here today. Was, this, was this not your first time, Greer? No, it was. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, you're welcome aboard. You, have you joined the Vancouver UFO Meetup Group? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll stay in touch, and uh, yeah, like Mimi and I will will book a time for you, you know, to give a talk. Very cool. Sounds good. Okay, Rolf, you want to say goodbye, or you, you can have your camera off if you want. Well, whatever she's behind you, you can't see her anyway. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I just want to thank thank Michael Horn for being on, on the show and his um, website for everybody is called theyfly.com. It's been a great talk, and thanks to. Yeah. There were 16 of us, and you were the three left standing at the end. So thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. Thank Enjoy you your day. Party. We'll see you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye, Bye now. Bye. See you, folks.